Welcome to Life in Alberta and another episode of the Average Albertan Podcast. Today I bring back Eric and Ryan and we have a lively discussion about the last round of the playoffs and of course the Edmonton Oilers. Free agency, the draft, the players, the coaching staff and of course Connor McDavid, the captain of the Edmonton Oilers. So please grab your coffee, sit back, like, share, and subscribe, and enjoy today's episode of the Average Albertan Podcast. All right, welcome to the Average Albertan Podcast number four. Yes, if you haven't checked out the other three, make sure you go to the channel, check out the other three some really good Euler information, especially their drive in the playoffs. And guess who we have back for number four? He's like an even numbered guy. He shows up for all the even numbered episodes. <laughs> so we have Ryan back as always, and Eric has joined us once again. So how are you guys doing tonight? I'll leave it to Ryan. Ryan, how are you? Not too shabby. Uh, the the draft has been pretty exciting, to be honest. I've been watching that and... Uh, waiting for the storms to come in and yeah no it's been it's been a pretty good night so far all right and Eric? Yeah, yeah no uh well uh looking forward to to our our chat uh so i've got the nhl background in the background and of course canada's team is uh represented there and um and the cfl is on and of course the big battle of alberta tonight as we record and uh although the elks are uh, I think they're five point uh, underdogs. Uh, it's Calgary, so let's smash them in the face. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll we'll get to the Elks a little bit later. We want to cover, of course, a lot of the NHL tonight. We will eventually get to the Oilers, but we're going to leave the Oilers a little bit later on. Got a lot of things to cover before then. We'll talk WHL. We'll talk CFL, and who knows? Maybe we'll even talk some and NASCAR. I don't know. We'll see how we'll see where the winds take us. All right, so NHL season is over, but you know Canada and rabid hockey fans, we can't get enough. We want to talk hockey 24-7. Let's go back a little bit because we didn't have a chance to do a podcast during the finals. So let's talk about the finals a little bit. Of course, we had the Tampa Bay Lightning and the Colorado Avalanche in the finals. Uh, Ryan, let's start with you. How did you see the finals go? What do you think about the Avalanche winning the cup? What are your observations about the final series? I had uh, Tampa pick going in, but the Avalanche came in like a wrecking ball and just that what wasn't much of a competition. You kind of seen, uh, especially in game six, the uh, lightning kind of petered out there. Uh, Maybe too long, you know, cups the last couple of years, maybe uh, just couldn't match the energy that the Avalanche brought. Uh, it's going okay. to be very interesting in the off season to see if the Avalanche can at least hold some of their team together, but it already looks like they're moving on from their goalie, um, and they're going to be hard pressed to sign half of their top six. So we'll see if they can repeat. But okay, yeah, and Eric, how did you see the final play out? What were your thoughts? Uh, yeah, I, I thought it was very good. I was actually excited for a final. A lot of times when the two teams that I cheer for, and of course those are the Oilers and and the Leafs, and sometimes they're not. Uh, many times they haven't been in the playoffs um but uh you know you the first round is always very exciting because that's usually to me where you're going to get your upsets second round is interesting third round i'm kind of getting tired and by the time the stanley cup rolls around depending on the teams i'm i'm usually uh just not super interested because um you know it's it seems quite distant and and uh doesn't seem to be a lot of upsets this was high energy um i really gained a lot of respect for tampa um because i really thought they were overmatched i thought colorado uh was was pretty exceptional but they they battled uh, tampa and uh very deserving of of respect uh in that sense of course they're good but uh colorado you know just the way they rolled how much time they had uh, they did two sweeps, uh, you know, uh, getting there. St. Louis, I guess, pushed them to six. But yeah, it's um, I was I was really uh, impressed with Tampa. Um, 
And so uh, it was a very good final. I thought it went to the team that deserved it. Um, so, uh, but as uh, Ryan has said, future, you know, it's great to win, but the days of dynasty, the reason why there haven't been dynasties is it's hard to hold on to those those players and those teams the way they used to. So uh, yeah. who knows what's coming? Yeah. And you sound like you're a, a sports reporter, media personality, because that's what I hear from them year in and year out is as the series drags on, they just want the playoffs to be over so they can go home. So yeah. I agree, unless there's a Canadian team or a fan favorite team in the finals, it's it's a tough grind to keep up with it for four series. Yeah, it can be for sure, right? And and also, you know, as Canadians, where it's it's dragging on and on. So now we're coming to the end of June, uh, still playing hockey, and and we don't get a lot of summer. We still haven't had any, as far as I'm concerned, here with all the rain. But man, it it gets tougher when it's you know 25 degrees outside and. You know, sometimes in the States, too, they want to play the games on uh, this year. It was always six o'clock, which was nice. But uh, you can get some games, you know, maybe not in the finals, but certainly in the third round where they might be a little bit earlier. And uh, that's a killer when for Canadians who, who want to be outside uh, rather than watching hockey. Yeah. And, and again, it, it did run a little late than usual. usual. Usually we're done by first week in June. But of course, the schedule being what it was hopefully we'll get back to a, a normal schedule come october mm -hmm. and you can't fault you can't, fall, you, can't uh, you know be too upset that colorado won they were the second best team in the league as we look at the stats 119 points florida was the only team that was better in the regular season i think florida uh, only got past them because colorado took their foot off the gas at the last quarter of the season yeah absolutely and tampa bay finished eighth overall in the league you know, you got to give credit to Edmonton. They were 11th in regular season points, and they made it to the Final Four. So as an Oiler fan, as a hockey fan, you can't be disappointed in the Oiler season. This was probably the most excitement we've had since 2017, and before that, probably not till 2006. So I think you guys would both agree that this was a very successful season for Edmonton. Oh, for sure. Right. It was nice to see them go. It was, uh, you know, it's, it's too bad about the injuries. It would have been nice to see them healthy and see what kind of damage they could do. I still think Colorado was a better team. The depth that Colorado had, uh, you know, I mean, losing their uh, second best centerman in the third game, um, you know, wow, they, they had a lot of depth and, uh, but, but, you know, I think Edmonton. I think Edmonton easily could have taken a couple of games from them if they were healthy, and perhaps some goaltending. But that's a whole other issue. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll we'll get back to the Oilers in in just a bit here. So other news uh, over the last couple of weeks, we had the NHL mm -hmm. awards during the the finals. Uh, we're not going to go through every award, but we'll go through kind of the the major ones. The Hart Trophy, a little bit of controversy. Austin Matthew from your Toronto Maple Leafs, Eric, won the heart. <laughs> and we can see in the in the final voting, he had about 500 more votes than second place Connor McDavid. Thoughts about that, Eric? Uh, uh, <clears throat> you know what? I'm, I'm going to try and be unbiased because Leaf fans drive me crazy, which is ironic, right? It's like, do you hate yourself? Well, a little bit sometimes. Um, you know, it it it's ridiculous. I think it's just a case of we're tired of Connor winning all the time. So let's oh look, here's here's something that's shiny and, and new. I've But I've it's not Connor that wins all the time. Bry said a one a couple years ago. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But it's it's just Connor's always in the conversation, right? And and uh I think the Leafs finally have somebody who's who isn't just in Leafland very good. I think they have somebody who's who's a little bit more universal and, and recognized as that. But I still, you know, I still think uh, I I still think that he is not Connor level. Like if you were to offer me uh, as a Leaf fan, if you said, "Hey, uh, McDavid, 
right now. You know, would, would you like that trade? And I would say, absolutely, thanks very much. We just ripped you off. Mm-hmm. I think Connor does more. I really do. I think Connor's a much higher level. And, uh, you know, Matthews is very good, blah, 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 blah. He's not on the same level, and I don't care. So I do I do I like it? Nope, don't like it. Um, so I'm not I'm not happy about it. I think it was really biased, and uh, it makes me wonder about the Eastern. You know, maybe there. We've always heard that there's a bit of an Eastern bias, be be it the time zone. You know, they you know they want to stay up late and watch the late games, blah blah. Um, and I think to a certain extent that's kind of what happened here. That's the only way I can explain it. And, and Ryan, I'm sure you're going to kind of echo a lot of the same statements that Eric just kind of mentioned. Austin Matthews winning the heart. Deserve, not deserve. What do you think? If if McDavid wasn't around, yes. If McDavid was maybe half the year injured, sure. Um, but the fact that five voters never even had McDavid in the top five raises a lot of questions. And of course, all five of them are from out east. Um the fact that any voter had McDavid lower than than third, to be honest, is just shows you he's getting shafted just for being the best year after year after year. Uh, the conversation of, of McDavid and Matthews, who's better, it shouldn't even be that conversation. It should be the conversation of Drysettle and Matthews, who's better out of those two for second. Yeah, time. it could be. Yep. Yeah. And I agree. Austin Matthews, Rocket Richard, best goal scorer in the league last season. Hart, I, I don't know. I think that's going a little too far. I, they always use the excuse that McDavid has dry sidle. Well, Matthews has Marner. He has, you know, probably a better defensive court to work with as well and better secondary players. So McDavid I and think- dry played on the separate lines for about 80% of the season, whereas Marner and Matthews played together for 80% of the season. Yeah. And I if think dry sidle got shafted as well. He finished ninth in Hart yeah. voting. He should have definitely been top five, in my opinion. Um, but again, you get that Eastern bias or you get the, you know, you can't have Connor without Leon. So therefore, we can't reward both of them. And unfortunately, um, I think we're going to see that for years to come while they're on the same team. Okay. And Calder went to uh, Cider from Detroit Defenseman, won by over 700 votes over Zegris from Anaheim. Zegris is an outstanding, talented, flashy player. He had some of the best goals last season in the league. But that, you know, soon-to-be stud defenseman, Sider, had an outstanding season for a below-average Detroit team. So, Eric, any any objection to Sider winning the Calder? It's funny. You know, he's not a name. Like you said, it's the flash that gets your attention. And so this, this you know, kid didn't really... I uh, get much of my attention in comparison, but um, you no, know, it, it's nice to see. Um, I, I, you know what? I'd love to say that I'm really knowledgeable about this player, but I'm not. I uh, mm-hmm. I don't really. So you know, it uh, unless I have somebody in in my circle, meaning the teams that I care about involved this is one of the ones that you just you know the heart of course you're always going to be aware of the rocket richard you're going to see but the calder and unless it's one of one of our unless it's exceptional and he also he's you know in the calder but he's also in the rocket richard which would be like what but uh yeah this isn't something that really catches my attention so yeah i'll just say good for that young man how's that (laughs) (laughs) and ryan anything to add about cider well, I, I, yeah, I don't know much about him, but Detroit was terrible this year. And for him to be a, a shiny little pin, only minus nine as a, as a rookie is pretty good. Um, I'm just happy it wasn't Michael Bunting. I would have lost it. <laughs> a 26-year-old from Toronto. Uh, well, not from Toronto, but playing for Toronto. I'm, I'm surprised, to be honest. I, I, think yeah. the last time, I think the last time that Toronto might have won a – a rookie, because I I don't think uh, uh, Matthews didn't win it. Am I correct in that? To make sure I don't make a mistake, I don't think Matthews won the Calder. So I, I think it was Howie Meeker. Really? <laughs> so, yeah, Howie Meeker I, did did win the rookie uh, one. I thought so. Matthews did win the Calder. Did he win the Calder? I thought it was Liney. Yeah, I thought it was. Okay, 
Okay. Well, no, I, I didn't think he did. So it's been a while since the Toronto franchise has won. If you know, I mean, how he you know, may he rest in peace just died, and I think it was '98. Uh, you know, when he died, Golly G, and so on and so forth. So yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I think I think Lucas Raymond probably deserved to be higher up than uh, Michael Bunting. You know, a true rookie, one or two years out of junior, but. Morris Sider was one of those guys I remember when he was drafted. It was kind of a surprise. He kind of, Detroit kind of picked him out of left field. But obviously, Stevie Y and the drafting team knew what they were doing because he's going to be an excellent defenseman for Detroit. The Norris Trophy, best defenseman. Uh, interesting that Morris Sider is not on the list for best defenseman. Uh, Kale McCarr barely by 25 votes, won the Norris Trophy over Roman Yossi. And then Victor Hedman, of course, was third. Anything you guys want to add? Uh, start with Ryan about the Norris Trophy. It's going to be great. As an Oilers fan and having Colorado in the West, it's going to be great to watch McDavid and McCarr go against each other for years to come. That's, that's just two very, very, very exciting players to watch at yeah. both ends of the ice. And they're going to be going head-to-head -head for next five years and you know what's funny is is you could make the case for the first time in nhl history connor mcdavid winning the con smythe even though he didn't play in the final oh, he yeah. finished with the most points dry had the second most points and kale mccarr yeah he's an outstanding young defenseman and he he does deserve the con smythe trophy but again you could make that case for connor mcdavid um, pulling the Oilers to the uh, semifinals. Eric, anything about Makar? Yeah, just he is exciting. I thought as the season went on, uh, his name got mentioned considerably more, right? And and uh, and he really started to take notice. And then in the playoffs, he, you know, uh, was just uh, on fire. Ron McLean loves him. I think Ron McLean probably has a poster of him on the wall, uh, kind of thing, because he. He just, yeah, he thinks he's he's exceptional. And there were times when he was offside or whatever. He's like, no, he's that fast. It's just, you know, and I'm just like, oh, please, Ron. You know, yeah. it's just ridiculous. So, but that being said, he, he is decent. You know what I'm excited about? And it it's uh, disappointing in some ways. But back in my day, Canada Cup used to be a big thing, of course. And they call it the World Cup. But we've got... You know, can you imagine McCarr, McDavid, like we've got, oh, very exciting to think about international competitions, uh, realizing that, you know, the Olympics, if that comes up again, won't come up again for another four years. Um, yeah, and I know that they're, they're talking about bringing back that, uh, you know, the World Cup stuff. Uh, but with Russia, I think things are, are going to be uh, a little bit difficult. So... It, it's too bad because it would be exciting to see these these players together and see what would happen on a team and and man i'd love to see that but who knows right so yeah but eric but eric what are you talking about the u.s would have heart winning rocket richard <laughs> ted Lindsay winning austin matthews <laughs> uh, you yeah, know really you canada you know, it wouldn't matter at all like matthews would he he's not <laughs> I know, well, you know, here I've got the big lead thing behind me and, and certainly all those those cats in Ontario are going to be losing their mind. Keep in mind, oh, I got to tell you this one. So it was funny because when, when uh, uh, you know, Tampa was, was in the final and I think the, the one game was 7-1 or something to the Avalanche, 7-0, uh, the Avalanche won. And somebody wrote, I think Toronto would have done considerably better against the Avalanche um and if they could have gotten to them and i was like well yeah you got to get past the first round right you know yeah. like, if they just it I, as you and now i don't know this is a whole different topic and i'm taking you uh mr moderator everywhere but you know there's a reason why leaf fans were voted the most hated because they're just so navel gazing it's frightening so this kind of win um you know, is, is, well, yeah, of course he deserves it. He's the best. And we're going to hear blah, blah, blah about that for a long time. You know, and of course, well, you know, with that, McDavid wanting to be traded to Toronto. 
So, yeah. <laughs> Some Eastern hockey writer already said Matthews is the best ever American born player. And I think a guy by the name of Kane might have a, a exception to that. Or Mike Medano. Or that. Yeah. Or even hey, Billy Garrett. Guy can't even <laughs> get out of the first Billy round. Billy Garrett forgot to be a decent hockey player, right? Like, I mean, there's a lot of decent, you know, hockey players. I mean, yeah, or it's very frustrating. And, 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 one and last moving comment. on to the all-star team selection, this is where, you know, a lot of Edmonton Oilers oh, fans, again, yeah. were, were upset and, and disgruntled because you have Austin Matthews, who made the first all-star team. Connor McDavid is on the second all-star team. And Leon Dreisaitl is not an all-star, simply because he's the third center on the list. So you can't even place him like they did one year with, with Ovechkin, you know, putting him on the off wing or something. To me, there's 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 problems with the all-star selections. When Leon Dreisaitl, second leading scorer in the league, is not on the first or second all-star team, and Connor McDavid is your second line all-star, it, there's a flaw in the system, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, it's an Eastern buy. It's just awful. Like it's, yeah. yeah, no, for sure. There's a flaw in the system. Uh, you know, because this is a family show, I could say something else, but yeah, it's just, it, it's silly is what it is. There's yeah. no other adjective I can come up with. That's clear. So you got Matthew, Ma Matthew Kachuk, an all-star, Leon Dreisaitl, not an all-star, you know, Huberdu and, and, and Goudreau. Yeah, they're really great players, but I'd still take Dreisaitl over either of them. So yeah. anyway, we gotta, we gotta move on. We finished the, uh, award. Let's quickly talk about the Hall of Fame selections. Now, Eric, you were probably around when some of these players uh, played the game. In fact, probably all these players were part of the game. Ryan, you know, probably don't remember all of them. Uh, I know, I know. Other than maybe the Herb Sedin, Carney. Long going Alfredson. Those guys are. Yeah, those I don't think I was around for her either. either so. <laughs> oh, I don't know, Eric. Uh, you you might have been in diapers back then. So what you, who, who stands out, Eric? Who is the most deserving of the players that you see there for the All Star or for the uh, Hall of Fame selection? Uh, you know what? I, I was a Luongo fan. Um, I found him to be uh, a very decent uh, goaltender. Uh, certainly, you can forget 2010. He was our goaltender when we won uh, gold in Vancouver. Um, and a big, he was a big part of that. Um, I think, uh, you know, he was made captain of the Canucks and he took it, which was very good of him. Uh, and then realized, you know, how difficult that is. But, but he was the face of the franchise. He was willing to do that. Um, never got to his Stanley Cup. But... Um, you know, I, I really liked him. There's a lot of Canucks on this, right? With Sedins as well. Like that's yeah. something uh, too. Uh, interesting that, you know, they both go in at the same time. Um, so yeah, no, uh, Alfredson, I'm sure he's very nice. I, that was a bit of a shock to me. Um, but, you know, uh, Matt Sundin getting in was a shock as well, right? Um, and, I, you know, so... That's the, mean the Toronto guy? Yeah, that's the... No, he's the Canuck, wasn't he? Matt? Wasn't Matt Sundin? Oh, the Canuck. Canuck. Okay. All right. He was the captain. All right. He was very good. He was very good. <laughs> Not... I don't know about Hall of Fame, though. I think he got in on, like, the first vote, too. It was really ridiculous. But but anyway, so I yeah, don't I think... know, uh, you know, and, and uh, Carnegie, from what I understand, Herb is uh, going in as a builder. Right, he's not because I don't think he played too many games, and again, right, uh, right. that's back yeah. to the, the racism yeah. at the time. So, so yeah, so no, I, I, I good class, I think. Um, some surprises. The Alfredson one is is a, a bit of a, a shocker. Yeah, but, I think uh, I think the controversy was it should have been Mogilny. Mogilny deserved to be before, before Alfredson. Before Alfredson, yeah, I've heard that. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Ryan, of course, you grew up watching the Sedins. You know, uh, personally, I'm happy they both went in at the same time. I think it's, uh, how can you not put both twins in at the same time? Both had very similar point records, similar achievements in the NHL, but anyone stand out as being the most deserving? 
of this class? Well, I had the pleasure of watching the Sedins rip apart the Oilers seven times a year for quite a few years. So, yeah. And but, their, even, their last game was against the Edmonton Oilers. I remember their last game, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and and even, uh, yeah. Okay. I, I don't know. But, like those, those four players, the four players I grew up watching, Alfredson, the Sedins, and Luongo, I mean, other than one playoff run each where they made it to the finals, I don't remember them doing anything else outstanding, to be honest. Yeah. Okay. Let's go to the big event of today, the draft, the entry draft. And right now, a lot of the players have been selected for that first round, but there's still a bunch to go. And in fact, I don't know. Let's refresh here and see if the Oilers have picked yet. Looks like they're only on pick number 18 right now. So still ways to go. Uh, let's go down to the top three. Montreal selecting Slavkovsky at number one. A little bit of a shock. I know it was between him and, uh, ooh, Devils picking number two, Nemec. Cooley, number four. Wow, Shane Wright fell to number four. He was That's the consensus. what I was surprised about. Watching yeah, it. Was we're, we're, I was watching it. And, and I mean, he wasn't the consensus first overall pick for everybody. And, and just given the last couple of years, it's kind of hard to judge these players very well. But the fact that Shane Wright, the majority first overall pick, fell three spots. I mean, I've never seen that before. It, it's always just the, the consensus first first and maybe second they maybe add the second in there to create some conversation but generally everybody knew who was going first and they would go first well and it wasn't long ago when the uh, draft lottery was held and montreal won it everyone would have bet on them taking shane Wright. it was almost a given so it's only very recently that he fell in the rankings and i don't know if that's his gameplay or if it's well, personality or what the issue was but the seattle that... may have got a steal or the other teams ahead of them knew what they were doing and he's going to end up being a bust. Eric, do you know anything about the uh, top four here? No, I, I was surprised. Like I, I had heard Wright's name considerably, although uh, Slavkovsky, uh, today I was listening to the radio uh, and um, uh, Gregor uh, on on TSN said uh, he thought that's uh, who, who Montreal would pick. And uh, just because he's he's uh, uh, he just kind of falls into that Montreal uh, European fast right. kind of dating thing. Well, so no. so I you know I'm I'm not sure. I was um, I I did watch. I did see the the only part that I had seen was Shane Wright being chosen by Seattle, and you see him, and you know I just you, there's a part, and maybe it's the parent part. You feel sorry for the kid because you know there was a lot of pressure on him, and yeah. he dropped to four. And you know it's and everybody tries to be pretty decent about it, but but you know he's disappointed, right? He's out of the top three. The so. the thing that I'm really questioning is that the Canadians are always looking for a center. They're looking for that franchise center, and they passed one <laughs> up for a winger. Yeah. Well, not, yeah. not to say that Shane Wright would be a franchise center, but they passed up a, uh, a center for a winger. Yeah. yeah, and again, Canadians used to always be drafted top one, top three, top you know, four in the draft, and, and this time the top Canadian was number four. So it'll be interesting to see how he pans out. You know, Seattle, again, may have got a steal. He may be the best player. I'm just shocked that he fell to four. I thought for sure he would go at number two. Um, and, and the other players that were drafted, I don't know much about these young guys. Gauthier goes to the Flyers at five. Blue Jackets, you know, with Juracek. There used to be a time where I could pronounce a lot of these names, but uh, <laughs> Korczynski, I guess, goes to the Blackhawks. Uh, number eight, Casper, goes to the Red Wings. Savoy, he was highly touted at one time, goes to the Sabres and uh, so on so they're about you know halfway through that first round i'm surprised that they haven't gone a little further let's just refresh again yeah still showing number well, that, 17. that chicago pick at number seven that was an exciting pick right there uh montreal made a big splash getting uh oh for crying out loud uh getting uh the brinket 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not the brink hit Doc. Doc. The brink went to, to Senators. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll get to that uh, in a sec. We'll come back to the draft uh, towards the end of the episode just to see who uh, else has been drafted here. Oilers believe draft number 29, so they still have a ways to go before their pick. There have been a few moves, uh, as Ryan mentioned, a few trades recently. Uh, a couple days ago, we had the Ryan McDonough going to Nashville for a couple younger guys, probably more of a contract kind of the trade there and then today a couple big trades um we had georgiev going to colorado so they have a new goalie ryan mentioned that earlier and we have the brinket going to ottawa for I, that seventh round pick i guess going okay. back to doc you could say that the canadian canadians did get their center yeah okay so okay. so maybe they, maybe they had this brewing for a while so they knew that they could get away with picking a winger okay Eric, what do you think about these two trades? Um, I was surprised that uh, the Debrinket one went for like Chicago. Truly, is getting rid of they're they're just they're stripping it down, and obviously with the picks, that's that's what they're going for. And you can see that there's even a 2024 pick in. That's a third rounder. Um, so I was I was surprised that uh, Debrinket, who certainly was on and let's be honest, I'll, I'll speak like a Leaf fan. He wanted to be a Toronto Maple Leaf. Everyone knew he wanted to be a Toronto Maple Leaf. Um, but, yeah, well, and he ends up in the same province. So uh, that's good, I guess. But but um, I was surprised that it was just picks uh, that Ottawa, I thought it was bold on Ottawa's part. Good for Ottawa. Um, you know, uh, and their 20 fans, I guess. So, uh, you know, um, good for them. Uh, the yeah. Colorado one, uh, it means Kemper, of course, is in the mix. Uh, lots of oiler talk about Kemper, Kemper, Kemper. Um, he, uh, my understanding is he wants a lot of term. He's looking at about six years. And uh, because, of course, the Stanley Cup background now, and, and that's in his, uh, his back pocket, um, you know, I, I think uh, he will. Obviously, he'll be on the open market. Uh, uh, you know, Colorado recognized that they didn't want to spend that much and they got their guy. So good on Colorado. Uh, Colorado could very much be like Detroit was when they were winning with Osgood in the net. It doesn't matter. Uh, Osgood was not a game stealer much. He was solid, but he wasn't a game stealer. But he well, didn't need yeah. it because of the team in front of him. Call the kind of like Corey Crawford when Chicago was winning the Cups. Crawford wasn't, you know, that all-star goaltender, but he he was enough like the Grant Fuhr, you know, to get them on. So, uh, okay, guys, we do have to kind of move on because we still have a lot of stuff to talk about. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of shocked there weren't a few more trades. Maybe there were. Let me just update it here. No, uh, usually uh, on draft day, we get a lot of trades on the draft floor, but it doesn't look like we have any more. Let's run quickly through uh, the Canadian team since, you know, viewers of this podcast, a lot of them probably have a Canadian team as their favorite team. I'm not going to spend too much time on each of them. Maybe we'll cover two or three at a time. Montreal, of course, their big news is they had the first overall pick. We know very well how exciting that is because Edmonton fans have had number one pick after number one pick for the last 15 years. So good on Montreal to have that number one pick. Um, other than that, not a lot of moves for the Montreal Canadiens. There is talk of Josh Anderson maybe moving on or being traded. Ottawa, big trade, you know, involving Dabrinkit. Uh, Going to be great to go with Brady Kachuk. Good young nucleus. Uh, their team owner, Melnick, passed away recently. Um, so Quite that's the know, best. Yeah, that's 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 going to be, you know, it, it, anytime your owner passes away, you never know what plans are from the new guy. And then we have uh, the Maple Leafs and the Maple Leafs, again, not very active so far. They have pick number 25 and then not a, not another pick till round three. Uh, I guess, you know, big news out of Toronto and, and Montreal is the passing of Brian Marchment. I don't know if you guys heard about this, but. Um, yeah, he passed away suddenly, 
And it's an, it's an unfortunate anytime anyone passes away, but you know, a guy of his age, uh, sad to see that. Did Marchment play for Edmonton? I can't remember. For four years. Four years. Yeah, and so, uh, and the reason why I remember it is uh, uh, he was, he, he <laughs> really uh, nailed, and I'm trying to think of, uh, he was, uh, he played for the Leafs and he had, and it was against the Leafs, um, and he had the kind of the Iron Man record at the time. I can't remember the, the winger's name, but anyway, he collapsed his lung. Um, oh. And uh, he had to go back by train rather than plane um, uh, back to Toronto. Uh, Marchman was was a tough, tough uh, defenseman. Um, I was surprised that he was only 53 years old, actually, yeah. to be honest with you. Well, first off, I mean, that's a tragedy in itself. But, um, yeah, I, I thought he was older than that. Um, and, of course, he has a son uh, playing. I'm not sure where he's playing. Um oh gosh uh, yeah is it anaheim i think it's somewhere like somewhere in the west i believe yeah it is in the west for sure yeah. so so yeah he is uh his son's playing as well right so so very very tragic for sure uh and uh was a, a decent you know probably for the oilers i remember him being around in number three number four uh defenseman and uh and yeah he's pretty tough so yeah he was at that luke richardson kind of you're just that dave manson really tough yeah. you know number five or six guy that you could rely on to uh to play really good defense and add that physical toughness as well uh, we also have you know news in in the nhl with a couple of of ladies stepping up into higher positions the leafs announcing Haley wickenizer taking on a more prominent role and in Los Angeles, we have Manon Riom, who was the first female goalie. I believe she played a game for Tampa Bay, playing a more prominent role for the Kings. So we're starting to see the little bit of the, the female gender starting to, you know, get involved more at higher level positions in the NHL. Well, and I think the other thing to mention is Mike Greer uh, in, in right. San Jose, right? Uh, right. And of course, was a great oiler as well, uh, Greer. Uh, when he yeah. played here, um, and, and good on him for, uh, yeah. you know, being the first uh, African-American to, to become yeah. a general manager. So. Good point. All right, we have Winnipeg, and in Winnipeg, uh, you know, a lot of rumblings that a lot of players want out of Winnipeg. Of course, they had Bufflin at one time, and Pierre-Luc Dubois, there's kind of rumors that he might want out of Winnipeg, and Patrick Laine recently. You know, Winnipeg doesn't seem like a, a healthy environment right now, coming from what I'm hearing rumor-wise out of players. They did hire a new coach. Rick Bonus is taking on as the new coach. Other than that, we're not hearing a lot out of Winnipeg. Are either of you guys hearing anything about the Jets? I'm just wondering, like, what happened? <laughs> they were they were such a good team for so long and then and then they just collapsed. They made a couple bad deals. I mean, I guess that's what happened is they made a couple bad deals and now it's trying to rebuild the team, it looks like. Yeah. Well, and their fans their fans are, are very passionate. They're uh, very much like Oiler fans, I think. You know, any any kind of middle uh, population city, Calgary, Edmonton uh, would include in that that group. So very passionate about their team. Um, but I agree, you know, people were picking uh, the Jets as Stanley Cup champions uh, just a couple of years ago, and they were close. They were really close. And then I think that was just pre-COVID, if I'm uh, not mistaken. And then, yeah, it's it goes very quickly. Some Something goes wrong. Halibut, he was a heck of a goalie. He didn't have a great season this year and whatnot not as great um so so yeah i i just think uh yeah things are things are tough uh in the peg for sure and i feel sorry for him because well as as an oiler fan too i mean how many years did we stop watching come december and go when's the draft right like it was it happened way too often and yeah. uh, i think i think winnipeg might be headed that way and Vancouver, not a lot other than the Sedins making the Hall of Fame. 
Um, not a lot coming out there. They did yeah, have a big Russian. There's, oh, a sorry, go ahead, J, there's a lot about JT Miller making his way out of there. Uh, they're looking for, for something for him. Yeah. Maybe a return back to New York or to one of the bigger markets. Uh, but I know Edmonton was in on the big uh, Russian uh, forward. Uh, he did land up in Vancouver. And of course, the Vancouver Canuck fans are a different breed on their own. And uh, they rubbed it into the Oiler fans that uh, they have the better city and the better climate. And therefore, that's why he chose to play there. Um, but yeah, other than that, not a lot coming out of Vancouver that I've heard anyway. And then, of course, Calgary, both your guys' favorite teams, the Flames. Johnny yeah, it, it warms my heart to know that two thirds um, of their <laughs> first line aren't signed and probably won't sign. Oh, geez, there's that small. That's terrible, isn't it? <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's, uh, I'm hearing, you know, Goudreau wants, they're not, doesn't sound close to me. And, and, uh, so, oh, they, and, and Matthew uh, Kachuk, uh, you, you know what, I, I don't know if it was a weird dream, maybe it was just one of those moments when I zone out, which seems to be happening more and more as I get older, um, but wouldn't it be interesting if he came to the Oilers, um, you know, signed with the Oilers, it's not going to be, be too high, but, but I just think, you know how Oiler fans hate him, I as an Oiler fan hate him, but my God. That would be kind of cool in some ways, just to have him, you know, play with McDavid and and play against the Flames. It'd be fun. Well, but again, that's another podcast, I guess. But, I, I've heard that they offered Goudreau eight by eight, and he hasn't accepted it. So I think just being this close to free agency, he wants to see what else is out there. Maybe go back because he's from, he's a states guy. Maybe yeah. go back close to his hometown. And I've also heard. Uh, funny, funny the, the, the U.S. kids that Kachuk. I, I've heard a couple times, not from really reputable people, but maybe wants to go play with his brother hmm. in uh, Ottawa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I, I kind of feel sorry for Flames fans because they are in a situation where they could lose <laughs> a big part of their team, and I was kind of looking forward to that rivalry for years to come. But if they lose. Kachuk and they lose Goudreau and Markstrom, you know, falls off like he did in the playoffs, then they could be in for a rough couple of years to, to yeah, have to rebuild. Really tough. I'm, I'm really sad about it. But uh, we'll get over it. And, uh, we'll move on because, yeah, I, yeah. No, I agree. It was it fun. It was. It really was. And it was nice to see. And if I could be guaranteed an Oiler win every time like we had this year, I'd want to see it all the time, right? I don't, I don't, I've been on the other side where it's been disappointing. It only happened the one time, um, you know, and we had to shoot, you know, our, our, ourselves in the foot by putting the not puck in the net for them. But, um, but yeah, you know, it's, uh, I, I think we could have a fun rivalry with Vancouver as well without, uh, without any problems either. So Battle of Alberta, yes, it's good, but, at the same time, uh, oh well, sucks to be. <laughs> well, you know, you know, uh, Eric, I have to kind of be, I have to be diplomatic because there might be one or two Flames fans that tune into part of this. So, you know, you gotta, you gotta make sure that you're not anti-Flame the whole time, right? Yeah, sure. Good for you. But you're a guest. You're a guest. You can say whatever you want. You know, I, I, I have sat and I know, you know, God bless them because Flame fans are honest and they will, just like when Calgary was playing Tampa in the final, I, I didn't know much about Tampa. I had never been there. Didn't matter. They were my favorite team uh, because I was never going to want the Flames to win. And they felt exactly the same way about Carolina when the Oilers were playing. So yeah. Flame fans, you know, the only thing I can say about Flame fans is they're honest in their hatred towards uh, Edmonton. And God bless them, because I feel as equally passionate uh, about their team uh, that right. way. Uh, moving on, I guess there have been a few few things that have taken place today. Uh, Arizona did acquire a first-round pick from San Jose for their first round pick 
and two second round picks. So Arizona acquiring a few more draft picks. Of course, Georgiev, we talked about that. Oilers named Brad Holland assistant general manager and pro scout. Talked about Manon Riom, Mark Andre Fleury uh, signed a two year deal to stay in Minnesota. So take the Oilers off uh, Fleury uh, as a possible goalie. I was Kirby really Doc. hoping that we would we would make a run at him. Yeah, and I think Ryan, you mentioned Kirby Doc going to Montreal. So that's you know he was a, a top three pick I believe in his draft year. So he was the third, yeah, third. Yeah, big pickup for Montreal. The Brinkett going to Ottawa and Latang signing a six year, thirty six million dollar deal. And Latang is like forty one years old. How old? It's going to take him to forty one years old. That that contract. That's that's a dangerous contract. It's, I don't it, understand it. I mean, yeah. maybe it's a thank you for helping us win those cups, but that, I, other than that, I don't understand it. Yeah, I think I think three four years would be max. Maybe add on one for the loyalty, uh, but playing till he's forty-one, but I, six million dollars a year. You, yeah. you know what's what's interesting? Just just as that is, what happens to Malkin? Like he's a free know, agent. Well, I know, but okay. So it it was pretty clear by signing Latang, they wanted him to be a Penguin for life. Okay, good, you got him. And and yes, when I think of uh, their their Stanley Cup winning teams. I certainly think of Crosby, I think of him, but I think of Malkin. And it's, you know, what could you imagine, like, wherever he signs, you know he's coming into Pittsburgh and he's going to score. So uh, here's a fun one. Let's put Malkin uh, with uh, Ovi in Washington. I, I was going to go Wouldn't there, that yeah. Be right? Like, you know, so so it's, it's interesting that he's been kind of the odd man out. Um, and I don't think he's done. I think he's going to sign somewhere. And and but I don't think it's going to be Pittsburgh. I remember before his this contract that's ending now. Uh, before signing it, there was always the, it was the same kind of narrative. Like, is he going to stay? Is he going to go? Eventually, he ended up signing and staying. So maybe it's just what he likes to do. Maybe he likes to to wait to the final final hour and then say, Yeah, okay, I want to stay. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Maybe he. I. I. I would not want to pay a lot him a lot of money based on his uh, injury factors. Uh, you know, he may only play half the season, but you know, for Melkin, this is his probably his last big contract. So I can see him, you know, going to the place that's going to give him the most. So, so he's got to be in the two three range at least, though. With that, yeah. Name, you know, yeah. and he's going to get some term of. You're right. He's going to probably finish off. So maybe three. Three, three, yeah, you know. So, yeah. so he's, you know, uh, but there you go. It would be, but he's not coming west. I, I can't see that happening, right? He'll stay. No, here. unless he'll it was to, Los Angeles or something. You know, sexy, yeah. Maybe, maybe he'll go to Florida where all the other Russians like to go. Yeah, maybe, right? Wow. You know, it could could be, but uh, yeah, we saw how that turned out. So, and and who knows with the Russian players, right? With the geopolitical situation and then and the situation in Europe right now. Who knows even if the Russian players will be back in the NHL. I've heard talk that uh, there might be some issues with that, but that's that's for another podcast at another yeah. time. There, uh, there was something about, I wish I, I dug more into it, but some player, I forget, some Russian player, a, a new guy, had two IDs and one belonged to the Russian army or something like that. I really wish I dug into it more, but it seems very interesting. It seems like he's not the only one in the NHL with that problem. Right. Yeah, I think there was a Philadelphia goal tending prospect yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. so. And he ended up like he was at the airport looking to come back. He was told, "No, you're not going back." And uh, and now he's he's conscripted into the army. And yeah. so, yeah, uh, to a point where I was hearing a reporter today uh, say NHL teams should really think twice before they draft a Russian player. And, yeah. and ask, where is he? And I know the Oilers have two Russian players. One one is in Edmonton right now, but the other one's in Russia. And it's a, it's a bit of a concern. So, Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, again, yeah, especially if, if this escalates and, and there's the draft system put into play and these 18, 19, 20-year-old Russian players 
you know, may not be able to come over and play even in the minor leagues. So it, it, yeah, something definitely to keep an eye on, but I would agree. I would not want to draft a Russian player right now. Um, just... Unless the Russian player was in Canada. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Unless he was already yeah. here and he's not yeah. going back. Right. All right, guys, let's get on to the Oilers. I'm sure that's what a lot of people here were waiting for. Let's talk about the Edmonton Oilers. First big news, the jerseys. The return of the blue the and orange and Connor McDavid <laughs> wearing these jerseys again. I, I'm glad that this isn't a biased uh, broadcast. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, how do you like that, Calgary? I uh, tried for as long <laughs> as I could, Eric. I tried to remain neutral as long as I could. Fair enough. Um, fair enough. I wonder how sure? much of this was because of uh, Smith losing that puck with the background of black jersey. Mm. Uh, I wonder, yeah. You Mind go. you, these are one of my favorite jerseys. I love the uh, which used to be the road jerseys of the, the blue and the orange. When I yeah. think classic Oilers, this is the jersey that I think of. I hate, well... I, I don't prefer the white, you know, especially the, the ones from maybe 10 years ago, like the pajama white jerseys. Those are my least favorite other jersey. These probably, this one's probably number two or three of my all time favorites. I still like the orange one. Um, but yeah, it's time for a change. I've even seen, you know, rumors of Edmonton bringing back the old gear jersey. And this is just an artist concept. But, you know, kind of cool looking. Of course, they would have to modify it a little bit. Um, but, yeah, I think the orange looks pretty sharp there. But the blue, orange, classic, can't go wrong with that. What do you guys think? No, I, I, that's my Jordan Everly jersey. That's that's my definitely my favorite jersey is the one that they, they're going back to. Also, this this uh, teardrop one, the, the mechanical teardrop, I forget what they call it, the McFarlane one. Uh that was my first jersey ever so that that has always a special place in my heart yeah eric how about you what the uh, uh, Edmonton Robert, jersey? right like it, it's funny uh the jordan everly just shows our age right because of course i associated with uh like you i i still see uh uh a guy named gretzky wearing these blue uh, they were away uniforms um and uh yeah they they're just uh they're exceptional i i really like them uh, it means that I didn't have to buy an orange one. I still have a blue one in my closet, and it's back, baby. So that uh, saves me money. I, I just think they're classic. I like them very much, um, always have. And, uh, you know, it goes back to the original. These were the colors in the WHA days, too. And, um, you know, so now we're really going back. Um, but... Uh, yeah, I, I think they're good. They're classic. I'm glad the McFarland one's back as a third jersey. Um, I liked what you just showed us with the uh, kind of the orange outline. I thought that was really neat. Um, right. And I realize that that's not, you know, you, they haven't announced that yet. But um, I think it would be good. It, I, God bless them. I, I really never did like the orange one. Sorry, I really didn't. I realized that that kind of ushered in the Connor McDavid uh, time. But I, I never did like them. Um, and uh, these are better. So yeah. there you go. Okay. Um, <clears throat> speaking of Edmonton and uh, their contract situation, right now they have these players that you see on the screen. They are currently under contract. Connor McDavid, of course, the eight-year. Darnell Nurse, eight-year. Uh, Duncan Keith is still you know playing off his 13-year contract. These are the guys that are signed right now. And in terms of the players that are either UFA or RFA, this is the list that we see here. So let's, before we get to the UFA and RFA, any of these players here that are expendable trade bait players that possibly the Oilers could move to upgrade goaltending or third line center winger. What do you see, Eric? Um, well, there's, you know, uh, the Clef Bomb one's interesting to me, right? Um, I uh, I don't know how that contract works. I don't think he's ever going to play again. So uh, when I look at that, that's a name that, that jumps out right away at me. And, of course, uh, the rumors are really high right now on the Duncan Keith uh, 
uh, saying, hey, it's been a great year. Thanks. Bye. I'm leaving. Well, that, that would be really nice uh, in some ways because it would open some stuff up. And I really uh, believe Ken Holland already knows that. I don't know why he's keeping it in his back pocket, but I think he knows if Keith is staying or not, even though he's playing it a particular way and God bless him for that. So when I look and, and think, you know, is there anybody who could be traded away and uh, so on for something better? But keep in mind, that means we're trading away somebody. Um, you know, I, I don't, uh, you know, I, I, I wouldn't want to trade anything. Uh, Fogel is, is possible. Uh, he could draw some, some attention, but he's a decent third line guy. I like him. Um, and, uh, you know, we had a year here that was kind of up and down. Um, Cassian, I think will be bought out. I, I'm hoping that that will be the case. So, um, that was a really long answer to, I can't really see anybody, um, yeah. per se that really kind of stands out. And, and before we get to your response there, uh, Ryan, just again, to point out that, you know, worst case scenario, Keith is on the last year of that contract. So he only has one year left to go on that. Uh, Clef bomb, you know, may retire. That may be a contract. They can move to long-term injury like they did this year. I think of the, the ones expiring next year, Evan Bouchard is going to cost them some money. He's definitely an, an up and comer. But all the other ones, Devin Shore, Derek Ryan, Mike Smith, who, who's probably going to retire or go on injury reserve list. This, this is all money that's going to come off the books, at least by the end of next season. Um, you know, we do have Dry Seidel till 2025, Hopkins till 2029. So we do have a lot of talent long term. Uh, Ryan, what do you think about the current contracts on the roster? Well, it's not just uh, these players coming off the books in 2023, but there's some buyout money coming off the books too in 2023. Uh, I think Lucic is coming off in 2023 as well. Um, I'm just looking at what Chicago is doing and, and, and selling house. And I'm thinking back to this Duncan Keith trade. And maybe, and Holland got absolutely obliterated for making this trade. But I almost wonder if, if maybe there was like an under the hand table kind of shake of the hand saying I'll come over but I want to retire after this year and and, and it's not and it's going to give you guys five and a half million dollars of cap space and there's also supposed to be some sort of a cap surplus that we're supposed to get from it too whether or not the NHL awards it or not I don't know but I almost wonder if maybe everybody Chicago Oilers and Keith already knew that he was retiring after this year yeah that that trade did didn't make sense as it went through last year. It seemed like there was something missing. I think everyone knew it, and this might be the component that uh, was missing. In terms of, uh, well, the... I just want want to go back to trade bait. I think I think Barry is is out. Mm-hmm. I think regardless if Keith comes back or not, I think Barry's on his way out. Uh, we have a better Barry and Bouchard. Yeah. Uh, I think we can move that four and a half million dollars for depending if Kane comes back or not, uh, top six forward, to help get a top six forward. Okay. Uh, in terms of the players that, you know, are not going to be back unless they're re-signed, we've got, uh, you know, Koskinen, of course, he's already signed in Europe, I believe. Uh, Turris, Archibald, Puyarvi, recommend, or, you know, rumored to be traded. So a lot of these guys were not going to miss that they're off the books and their UFAs. But Brent Kulak, I think, is a player that the Oilers would be interested in re-signing. Um, Kyler Yamamoto, obviously, if he's not traded, they're going to bring him back or offer him a, a contract. Uh, other than that, though, I don't see anyone, you know, leaving Kane aside for now, anyone that the Oilers would be overly interested in bringing back, at least for their NHL team. Um, Ryan, let's start with you in terms of the UFAs, RFAs. What do you have to say about them? I think Kulak is most likely the one to come back if I was to pick somebody. Uh, Archibald, I wouldn't mind seeing him back. He's a good, he's that solid fourth line player that every, like the Stanley Cup winners, they have an Archibald on the team. Yeah. A feisty fourth line player. Uh, Holy Arvey, I think, is well on his way out. And everything I, I hear about Yamamoto is how the top guys love playing with him. So mm-hmm. I think he's coming back. Okay. Uh, for what I don't know, maybe two million dollars for a, for a bridge deal, maybe three million dollars. Okay, Eric. 
Yeah, I, I concur. I, Kulak uh, is decent. He's a he's an Edmonton product, right? Like he's from Edmonton area, so uh, it's nice to have him around. Um, that part I would like. Um, and I did like Archibald in the playoffs. I thought he was tough. I like that fourth line grit. Um, and uh, but you know I'm a Russell fan, but I don't know. It could be near the end. I, I really do like Russell. Oh, I got. I have I, some. I have some breaking news. Sorry, sorry. Uh, he's, apparently, he's being reported by Spectre is that uh, Oilers are talking with Arizona about a trade involving the first round pick and Zach Cassian. Oh. Oh. So well, that could be off. The interesting. I'm. I'm wondering if. Hopefully the Oilers are getting something, you know, substantial back. Because I wouldn't want to give up a first just to get rid of the contract. But okay, yeah, keep us updated. Um, let me just do a quick refresh of the draft screen and see. We're on the number twenty-two pick right now. Ducks just selected, so this might be something announced at the Oiler pick. So we're a few picks away before that. Okay. Yeah. And we should anything. mention that the Leafs are twenty-five, right? We should mention that. <laughs> Who? <laughs> the, the, the Leafs. Canada, Canada's team. The Toronto yeah. Leafs. Well, well, be Do you really think whoever they and, pick is going to play for them? They're going to trade be it interrupted. Away. By the way, I could be interrupted. Uh, I have to take a phone call from KD, if you know who I mean, eh? Oh, yeah. Jay Z. No, KD. Jay-Z. KD. Kyle. Yeah, Kyler. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I so, thought you uh, meant Jay Z and Drake and Beyonce. Oh my god. Oh. Right with them. Maybe Kyle. Oh. Kyle. Looks like the deal is done for Cassian. Really? Really? Okay. It also looks like Morazic is going to Chicago. Oh. Morazic to Chicago. As per Friedman. And that's okay. The, I mean, well, we got to take check Friedman here with, at, uh, hmm. at Elliot Friedman. Yeah. yeah. We got live breaking news. <laughs> it's too bad. Tune in to it. see the best breaking news. So yeah, there it is right there. 53, yeah, a minute ago, Cassian to Arizona and Morazic to Chicago. So okay. I wonder I wonder what the scoop is on the Cassian part then. So is, so you know, I wonder if the, I don't think the draft pick was in it. Then. Well, I, I think the draft pick is still going, so we don't have to retain any money. Okay. Well, it's got to be the Edmonton better get something more than that, like a, a second rounder at least or something. Because uh, I, I, think I think we're getting a player out of it. Oh, I, well, I would how, how do you guys like that? I'd like to thank the Edmonton Oilers who are probably listening to this right now. And they said, let's wait until the average guy podcast talk about free agents and Zach Cassian <laughs> before we announce it. What, well, how, here, how great Morazic in a first rounder. To Chicago for a second round pick and a first rounder. Yeah. So I wonder if the Leafs are giving up their twenty fifth. Like, uh, is it this first rounder this year? I, I'd assume so. Oh. Yeah, that because Chicago's Chicago's tearing it apart. So I I don't know what they're doing going after Morazic, but well, you know well, what? They're, the first rounder they're getting, out yeah, they're yeah. getting a pick. They're getting yeah. the pick, and I mean, good for Toronto because it means because I think Morazic was was around thirty three point two. Just, just wait, just wait, just wait, Eric. Didn't you just say something about Toronto's twenty fifth pick coming up? Yeah, well, I'm saying, but now they've lost it. It appears, right? Well, I thought you were Kyle. tight with Kyle. How come you didn't have the breaking news? Well, uh, because this happens fast, right? Kyle, <laughs> Kyle told me himself it's going to happen. I, and I said, well, uh, what about uh, Brendan? And he, Brendan, by the way, he doesn't like to be referred to as BS. Don't don't call him that. Right? <laughs> he, he just liked Brendan. Don't call him BS. Kyle's good with KD. But, uh, yeah, not, not so much with BS. So anyway. Okay, well, we're, we're finally getting some of these moves at the well, trade deadline that we were hoping for. Toronto has uh, done this just before. Send it a first rounder just so they don't have to retain money. This This is... This is a Toronto thing. It is overpaying just to get rid of the money. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait. Uh, there, there, there's that Arizona trade there. Uh, uh, that, that, that's that's, that's not the other one, though. So. Yeah. yeah. It's CBC. They're a little bit behind the times, right, Eric? So it's probably going to take them a while to update their website. We'll probably, it'll probably be updated by tomorrow. What do you think? 
<laughs> oh my God, hey, eh? come on, don't throw shade on Canada's broadcaster, right? Eh? All right. Well, let's let's head on to uh, quickly talk about the free agents. Uh, we talked about a lot of these guys already. Johnny Goudreau, um, you know, grew up in the Boston area. I could see him wanting to go back to the East Coast. But again, if the Flames throw enough money at him, he might stay. Philip Forsberg with uh, Nashville. Uh, Nazim uh, Kadri is an interesting free agent and where he will go. He kind of, I think, has his pick of teams right now. Um, Chris Letang already signed. Melkin, we've talked about. Nikushkin, I don't think, will be a, a overly sought-after player, Russian player. Claude Giroux, though, is an interesting one. Uh, I've heard rumors that the Edmonton Oilers might be interested in Claude Giroux. Eric, have you heard anything about the Giroux situation? Absolutely, right? It's very exciting to hear. Um, but, you know, keep in mind, this is a guy who's played on the East all his career. Um, and... Uh, so, you know, he is a Canadian kid, of course, but um, yeah, he, he would be an interesting one. Obviously, it would mean Kane's out, and uh, so that's possible. Um, but I, I, yeah, I can't see it. I, I don't think he's going to go east, right? So, or sorry, yeah. going to go west. He'll stay in the east. Burakovsky, who I was hoping the Oilers were going to get last year when he was available. Um, I don't think they need his his services now. They're pretty pretty good on uh, the top six anyway. Perron, I can't see him coming back to Edmonton. Kemper was the other one that uh, Eric mentioned earlier as possibly a, a, someone the Oilers might look at. Although I would be a little bit timid with the contract that he might want, especially with the term, because he is a little injury prone. I would. What stay are you guys away hearing about guy. Kemper? I, I would stay away from that guy. Absolutely. Like, I mean, look how yeah, they just got rid of Koskinen, right? Like, they just finally got out of out from under that. You're going to sign a 32-year-old, uh, and again, he's looking for six, six years. He's looking at six, six. And no, that would be awful. It would be terrible. Don't do it. Uh, uh, let somebody else do it. And especially with Skinner in in the in the wake, I, I would yeah. prefer the Oilers take a stab at a guy for two years and let Skinner develop just that little bit more, and then hopefully he takes the reins. Can I just yeah, you know, just kind of on that thing, and I know we're looking here, but I'm hearing about Reimer, right? Um, and I at first when I heard Reimer, I was like, oh, God, don't do that. That's ridiculous. You know, as a Leaf fan. I remember how he disappointed us against Boston and, you know, he was an okay goalie, but, you know, geez, don't do that. But kind of where the Oilers are, and I'd really like to see Skinner come in and it would give him a veteran. Um, and maybe they share half, 50%, and then next year it'd be less. I, You know, that's a possibility. And he would come in cheap. He wouldn't come in, you know, like I'm, I know uh, – What's the, I think it's a Buffalo guy. Is that Huso or what's that name? The, uh, Billy Huso Hus from St. Louis. St. Louis. So he's only, he doesn't have that many games under his belt. Neither does Campbell when you think about it. Like Camp, but Campbell's asking, the reason why Toronto's not signing Campbell is because he's asking too much. You know, he's, he's yeah. a five or higher. So I'm hoping that that will be the case. So. That's why Flurry would have been the perfect pickup for Edmonton. He he just signed for two years. That, that would have been perfect. Yeah, are you kidding? That's fantastic. It would have been great, but he's you know staying in the states, staying in Minnesota. And you know who I would love for the Oilers to go after if if the situation continues to deteriorate in Winnipeg is Connor Hellebuck. I think he would make <laughs> Edmonton a Stanley Cup favorite if we could get an All Star goaltender like him, or well, even what do, you, what, do you, what do you give up for him? Yamamoto, Puriyarvi, Skinner. I'd even give up Skinner. You'd have to, um, I think. I, yeah. I think you could put together a pretty good package of prospects, a Broberg or a Bouchard, one or the well, other. Uh, what's his name? The, the French-Canadian there. Uh, uh, Rodrigue? No, no, the forward. Uh, just oh, played uh, in the Memorial uh, Cup. Uh, Lebois. Le Pierre, no, Borgo. Borgo. Oh, Borgo, yeah. Bor Borgo would have to go, too. There, Edmonton has so many. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you put, 
if you put Holloway, uh, Broberg, Skinner, and then uh, Yamamoto and a first round draft pick next year, I think that's plenty. Uh, that's overpaying, but but Oilers have oh. to win now, right? This this is their yeah. window in the next three years. They have to go all out and get that goaltender. I'm not confident in Skinner. Yes, he's played some good games. He's a good up and coming goalie, but we don't know what he's going to be like in the playoffs. We don't know what his you know his endurance and his stamina and his composure is like in a playoff situation because the Condors Bakersfield didn't go that far in the playoffs. So they have to go out and get that goalie. That's priority number one. A good goalie can get them to the finals. At least that's my belief. When we look at the, well, I think I think if we take the Colorado approach where we get an average goalie that can make some above average stops every now and then, but build up around them, I think that's the way you have to go. I, I would agree if we had the defense that Colorado yeah. had, but with our defense, I think you need that upper echelon goalie. You need those well, extra saves. That would go with improving our defense and, yeah. and getting rid of Barry, who's not a defensive defenseman, and, and Keith, hopefully retiring, would give us, I hope, the flexibility to do that. Yeah, so that's good. Last thing on free agency here, guys. On the list that you see on the screen, kind of the lower tier uh, free agents from 12 down to 18, We'll leave Kane for the last little bit with the Oilers, but is there anyone on this list that you think the Oilers should target and why? Let's start with uh, let's start with Ryan on this one. I think Klingberg, uh, the defenseman there, John Klingberg, 29 years old. Uh, I, won't think, I mean, I don't know too much about him, but every time I hear him, he's, he's playing really well. So I'm, I'm surprised he's made it this far to free agency, but depending on what you can get him for and maybe for a short term, Hopefully, uh, okay. uh, I would I would target Klinberg and Eric. Um, yeah, interesting. Uh, I think uh, this Mason Marchment. I think that's the uh, uh, son, right, of uh, Brian. Yeah. Yes. So yes. Uh, so he's up, um, and uh, uh, yeah. So I I think when I look here, the one that. I can't help but stands out as Campbell. If they could get Campbell at a decent, uh, but decent means in that three, four range. And I, I watch a lot of Leaf games though, Eric. Is he, is he a good enough goaltender for, to carry the Oilers forward? Yeah, you know what? I think he is. I think he, he came late. I, I think he's got that potential for sure. Um, I, I don't think you work him like 70 games. I think you would work him probably 50 to 60, you know, 50, you know, and then get Skinner in. Um, I wouldn't want him for a long contract, but I, I think he's, yeah, I do think I've watched him. He, he got injured and then he kind of fell down a little bit. Um, but uh, I think he could be, I think he's a diamond in the rough. I really do. Yeah. Well, Eric, what about former Leaf Phil Kessel? Is that <laughs> someone the Oilers should go after? Well, and I, when I think of, Formerly Phil Castle, I, I, you know, let's be honest. He's an athletic trainer. <coughs> the guy's just the guy is a machine. He's built like Pillsbury Doughboy, actually, to be honest. <laughs> um, so, you know, he had some good years in Pittsburgh, and I think he got. So it was funny because there's a meme out right now about all these teams, all these guys who have left the Leafs, and then the next picture you see is they're holding the cup, right? And uh, of course, now we can add Kadri to this as well. Um, so, yeah, I think Kessel uh, is he in? A, he's in Arizona this year, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, yeah, eight million. He's not going to get maybe, eight million. Maybe um, that's who the uh, trade is for. Maybe it's going to be Zach Cassian for Phil Kessel. Well, well. but they're not. No, he's a free agent, right? So, <laughs> yeah, no, okay, good. I was like, what? <laughs> what are you? No, what are you, no, no. You, okay, you guys. Um, in that can? Holy cow! So anyway, let's let's finish Euler talk here, talking about the elephant in the room, the one player that probably was the unsung hero of Edmonton. Once you get past Drysaitel and McDavid, I think Kane was the MVP of the team. What do you think about him? Chances of him coming back? And uh, yeah, let's talk a little bit about Kane to wrap up this uh, 
part of the episode. Let's start this time with Eric. I'll start with one word. Bye. Because he's not coming back. Edmonton's not sexy. No, it won't be terrible. Um, you can... Now, you're right. He does have to be replaced. But he's not the only guy in the league. He's, he's, he's elite. He proved that. But I don't know if he brings that next year. He had to prove something this year. And he did. When he okay. doesn't prove something... I'm going to I want to interrupt you for a sec here. Because I don't understand this uh, Elliot Friedman tweet here. Yeah. Cast into Arizona with number 29. A future second, a future third for number 32. Isn't 29 Dreisaitl? No, 29 is our draft pick number. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I didn't catch, I didn't give you guys a heart attack? No, no, no. Yeah. Uh, that, that's what? not going to happen. So, so yeah, no. That, a future uh, second and a future third. I don't mind that. Yeah. Yeah. It, it gets rid of the contract. So, obviously, Edmonton's targeting someone. Could it, it be it, money it, for a Oh, does that game? mean the Edmonton gets number 32, the Arizona's 32? I think so. Yes. Yeah, I, I think so too. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So we dropped three spots and got rid of $3 million off the cap and picked up a third. That's a win. No, they, they gave up a second and third. Yeah, so so we went from 29th pick to 32nd pick. Right. And a future because they didn't have a second and third in this draft. The Oilers, so, right? So pretty yeah. much we gave up a second and third for them to take Cassian. Yeah. Plus. Yeah. So that, yeah. I think that's worth it to, to, to retain that salary or for them to retain the salary. Uh, so back to, to Kane. Ryan, what are your opinions about Kane coming back to Edmonton? Do you see any chance of that? The, the real problem here is that arbitration case. Nobody's going to want to touch him until they can figure out whether or not he's going back to San Jose or not. Uh, right. If he's going back to San Jose, I think it's a lost cause because then he's getting $7 million. Uh, if we have a chance to sign him as a free agent, I don't know what he's going to want. Hopefully not $7 million. But if we can get him high fives and low sixes, I think we should take a stab at it. What it, would be it, the term? What, what, what would you want for term on that? I wouldn't want any more than four years. You think he'd sign for that, though? I think he's looking for the big big term, oh, big bucks. Yeah. And that's the problem is that he has a lot of gambling debt that he has to pay off. Yeah. So obviously he's 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 motivated to get as much money as he can. Yeah. I I I have to agree with Eric on this one. I say we cut ties with Kane. I don't think it's worth it for the money we'd have to pay him. Again, I'd want to put that money to a good goalie or a trade for a good goalie, and even you know bring in a Claude Giroux for a couple years on a two-year contract. I'd be okay with that. But Kane, there's too many the, red flags. The problem with letting Kane walk is that that's the exact guy we've been looking for for seven years to play with McDavid. Yeah, it's true. It's true. You did find somebody finally who could play yeah. with McDavid, yeah. and uh, well, it was exceptional. But, didn't uh, uh, didn't the Brinkett play with McDavid and Junior? Yeah, but he's already been traded once. I don't think he's going to get traded at the end. <laughs> I know it's like why? I wouldn't mind no Strom if they can get Strom out of Chicago. I would take that. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean he's not Kane level, but he has that history with McDavid. I'm surprised they haven't in the past gone after more of McDavid's teammates where he had success with them, because he could obviously play with Strom and with the Brinkett in Erie. Uh, why wouldn't you go after him? I just, I don't know. There must be something else behind the uh, story. All right, guys, we got to move on. Finally, let's uh, talk about the other Edmonton team in hockey. And that is the Oil Kings. Just very briefly, got to give a shout out to them. WHL champions this season. And they went on and they beat the Seattle Thunderbirds in six games in the final going on to the Memorial Cup uh, where they didn't find the same success. In this fact, they weren't able to win. I think they won one game in overtime, uh, but didn't make the playoff round. And therefore, St. John's uh, were the team that took the Memorial Cup. So I know we don't cover a lot of the WHL, but important to kind of give Edmonton a shutout. They went all in this year. They made a lot of big trades, 
brought in Brendan or Gooley. Um, of course, they have Dylan Gunther, who is an Arizona player. Eric, anything about the Oil Kings you want to mention? Yeah, you know, I was disappointed with the Memorial Cup. Um, and it's interesting the way the Memorial Cup works, right? The host team who, who was waiting for six weeks fired their coach um, and then goes on and wins the Memorial Cup uh, is, is interesting. Um, so, you know, good on the Oil Kings. It's always uh, exciting. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's really decent hockey. They've been good. I feel sorry for them because they're, they are going to take a step back this year. Um, and they've been good. It would have been nice without the pandemic. I think we could have seen uh, even more success if, if the league had gone through uh, in, in 2020 and 2021. I think the Oil Kings could have been there win one of those years anyway. So, and you know so what? The only game, that, only game that Edmonton won? was against the against Memorial John. Cup champions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was against St. John's, right? And they were in all the other games. Like, they, they but it yeah. just Puck didn't go their way. Right? Yeah. One more one more win, and they would have made the playoffs, and then who knows what would have happened, because I think they had they had a stellar team this year. Uh, Ryan, anything about the Oil Kings? Well, I don't really follow them too much, but what I do hear, uh, I'm hearing that people are thinking that the West is – has too many teams and that the talent is too diluted across too many different teams and that maybe they should cut the teams in the west down to from 22 to 18 and and they will be able to compete better with the east um okay. other than that i don't really know too much i mean it's great that they they went on to at least get a chance at the memorial cup but again i think it could be a problem of east <laughs> east first west yeah, and we're going to see a lot of these Oil Kings in the NHL one day. Goulet, who is a Montreal prospect, uh, talked about Dylan Gunther, who's an Arizona prospect. Sebastian Casa, uh, goaltender for the Oil Kings. He's a Detroit prospect. So we were represented well by a lot of top prospects in the Memorial Cup. And I think one of the Oiler prospects was on one of the teams as well. Does anyone remember who that was? Might have been even the team that won the Memorial Cup. I know there was a Edmonton. Well, there, it, was, it was Xavier Borgo that was in yeah, the Quebec. Yeah, but I don't think he they, did. He win the. Yeah, no, they never won. But he was. No, they, no, he played they for didn't. Hamilton, didn't he? No, he played in Quebec. He was Quebec. Oh, Quebec? Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, I just want to bring up the Cassian trade again, and it, and if and if the the fans of Oil Country aren't happy with Holland with this, I don't know how to please them, but. They got a first, second, and third for trading Cassian in the first. Big Edmonton got a first, second, and third? Yes. So so they moved down from 29th to 32nd, so they're the last pick of the first round. Right. And they picked up a second and third pick. See, I thought Arizona picked up a second and third pick. I thought we gave up a second and third. No, we gave, we gave up the first, the 29th overall pick, and yeah. Cassian, and we got Arizona's 32nd round pick. And a second and a third round pick. Oh, okay. So we never lost a first round pick. Plus, we picked up two picks that we don't have. We don't have a second or third round yeah. pick this year. Okay. This and is yeah. You guys can see Valley. on uh, Elliot Friedman's Twitter here that uh, they're not. They're not happy. Again, that must be a Toronto fan. <laughs> oh my God, Eric! <laughs> is that you, Eric? <laughs> oh, geez, that was not me. I am not whatever that guy's name was. So. Yeah. yeah, no. Oh my you God. Know, oiler fans are gonna oil, right? They're they're gonna complain about every trade that's made. Um, the, everyone's given you know props to Arizona for the trade. You know, given the well, first. I did see uh, thing that said uh, you should have said draft pick number twenty nine, not twenty nine. You scared all oiler fans. Yeah, I don't know, I'm having a hard time making this out. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah, so the way I read it, a, well, a future second and future third for number thirty-two. I I think the Oilers. Gave yeah, up okay, we money. gave up three picks for for one. Right. Okay, that's terrible. Yeah. Plus you got. No, oh, that's not terrible. You got rid of <laughs> you got rid of Cassian. You would have had to buy him out. Yeah. Right? True. You know, so now you got rid of him. You didn't have to retain any contract, any of his money, and bye bye. And now you got three million for a goalie or whatever else. And here's one for you, Eric. It's like now I should come. To... <laughs> I know, <laughs> you know, I know. It's just so 
is ridiculous. <laughs> it is just, yeah, come come to the come to the lease so you can, yeah, oh, whatever. It's yeah. just ridiculous. All right, so, guys. Well, we are running up on 90 minutes here of our podcast. We have to end off with a little bit of football with the Edmonton Elks. Do you have an update, Eric? Is the game underway? Uh, I would imagine it is, but you know, you had me so engrossed that I haven't even watched it, so uh, <laughs> I will. But uh, but yeah, no, I, here's a question. Well, so we'll end up with this. And, and we talked a little bit about it, I think, before we started recording. And so I'm gonna go to Ryan and let him talk. He's he's the market that they're looking for, right? Uh, mid, you know, in, in the early 30s, mid 30s, uh, that's what they want. Uh, they made an announcement today, or sorry, yesterday, that um, for the rest of the season, uh, 12 and under are free as long as they buy an adult ticket to kind of bring those young parents in, right? So, Ryan, what would you need to be interested? And I don't know if you're an NFL guy, but what do you think of the CFL? What do they need to do to kind of get your demographic? I'm not an NFL guy. I'm not really a football guy in general. I I like watching football. I'd rather go to the stadium to watch it, though. I don't like watching it in the house. I'd, I'd rather soak in the environment in the stadium. And every time I've gone to an Elks slash, you know, back in the day, Eskimos game, I've always had a great time. And I, it, win or lose, it was it was great. I, I, I love the in-game experience. Uh, it's just getting out to the games that's the problem. It's just the... I find watching a football on TV to be boring. But then on the flip side, when it comes to hockey, I'd rather watch it at home than go to a stadium and watch it. I find watching hockey in a stadium is a little more boring than watching it at home. I, I don't know. I just, I, I love the in-game experience for the Elks, but it's just, it's just you know, finding the time to get out and and watch the game, I guess. Okay. Well, that's good. So, yeah, no. So improving on the kind of the, uh, the entertainment value um, when they're actually playing. So, so that, yeah, no, for sure. I understand that. That would be good. Um, I, I just grew up uh, as a CFL fan. I know, Glenn, you're more in the NFL category and you know uh, those players quite well. Um, so, yeah, no, I, I, I would really like to see the CFL survive. And every year it seems that we're worried about it. So, uh, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. I, um, yeah. You know, like I, I know that out west, it's it's bigger than it is in the east, with the exception of perhaps Hamilton, um, but but we'll go from there. And 30, 30 second response from each of you to finish off the Elks conversation, the name change, no one's really talked about that. Ryan, thirty seconds or less. What do you think about Edmonton's name change? I mean, I understand given the political climate these days why they did it, but. Back when they were the Eskimos, they did a lot of stuff for for people up north. They they, I mean, they had what seventy percent of the the people up north that, that didn't mind the name. I think they took a poll years ago, uh, and they and they supported those communities up north. So I understand why they did it. I just, I, I don't know. I mean, it doesn't bother me either way. Uh, I get to keep all my old gear because it all matches up with the gear now. But yeah, I don't know. I, I don't understand. I understand it, but I don't understand it. I guess. Okay. And Eric, 30 seconds or less? Um, You know what? I'm fine with it. Uh, I guess it's just the way it is. I know that I've heard a lot about cancel culture, blah, blah, blah. Um, you could call them the Edmonton Tiddlywinks, and <laughs> I, I'd be cheering for them because uh, they're my team. Keep it green and gold. Um, I like the fact that they went back to the double E on the helmets. Oh, they're doing okay. It's fine. Yeah. Okay. And... <clears throat> Before we sign off, highlight of the year for you guys, whether it's an NHL moment, whether it's an Oilers-specific moment, tell me what the highlight of the 2021-2022 hockey season was for each of you. Ryan, you get to go first. You're really putting me on the spot here. I think it was, uh, I guess it would have to be, Can you come back to me? Okay. <laughs> okay, we'll go around the table, yes. <laughs> and then we'll come back to you at the end. So let's see who's next. Uh, uh, Eric, how about you? 
Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, Connor McDavid scoring uh, game seven, Los Angeles, and just just the weight of the world. It was beautiful, right? I loved it, to be honest with you. It was it was so nice to to see uh, that game because it was a very tight game. And, and that's number one. But let me just mention beating Calgary has to be a highlight as well anytime. But number one, just to see Connor score, go down the ice, it was – it was beautiful. Yeah, it was really nice. Yeah, and and for me, it was just the fact that we had fans back in the building. We had a full schedule without interruption. Oilers making the semifinals and just rejuvenating that Oilers spirit. I feel the culture really changed this year in Edmonton. We've kind of lost a lot of that negativity, I think. And now for the next few years, I think uh, – you know, I, I, of course, next year, if we miss the playoffs or don't make the, you know, quarterfinals, it's back to old news again. But there were a lot of highlights this year, definitely. Ryan, back on you. Everybody talks about growing and developing your own players to make the NHL. But we grew and developed a coach that took us from out of the playoffs to the third round of the playoffs. or Yeah, out of the playoff picture to the third round of the playoffs. So I'd say that would be a highlight is developing your own coach who's worked with a handful of the players that he worked with this year up in the big leagues and taking us from what could have been a miserable year and more talk from Toronto about McDavid wanting out to third round of the playoffs. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to just uh, take one more looky look in at uh, the draft here. See where we're at. Looks like the sharks just picked. So, uh, Edmonton still a few picks away before their Arizona pick will kick in. So we won't be able to see that on the stream. And in terms of Mr. Friedman and updates from him, let's take a quick look if anything else is going on. Um, no, the last report from Elliot was the Arizona Edmonton trade. So we'll keep an eye on it tomorrow. Sometimes there's a little bit of uh, trade action on the second day of the draft. We have rounds two to seven going all day tomorrow, and uh, we'll see. But I still think number one priority, getting a goalie. We need a goalie. I don't have faith in Skinner. We need a temporary one. goalie. We don't need a full-time goalie in my we opinion. Need, we need a one- or two-year patch. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, guys, if uh, you haven't uh, tuned in already, for those of you watching the stream, thank you so much for staying with us and being part of our conversation. We love to talk hockey. We love to talk sports. Uh, this is our fourth episode now on the Average Guy podcast. So whether you're listening to it in your car, on your computer, on your phone, thanks for sticking with us for this full hour and a half. If you haven't checked out the channel, please do so. Like, share, and subscribe and all that stuff that YouTube wants you to do to get the algorithms going. And once again, congratulations, as they always say at the draft, Congratulations to the Stanley Cup champions, Colorado Avalanche. Final words, Eric? Anything on the way out the door? Uh, next year, you'll say congratulations to Stanley Cup champions, oh, the Toronto Maple Leafs. <laughs> okay. 56 be years in the making. Yes. Yeah, and and it'll, be in color. it'll be in color and goalies will wear masks. <laughs> 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 the parade is already being worked out and ryan last words let's see if toronto can get out of the first round first <laughs> <laughs> okay well guys i think we will uh leave it at that for the summer and come back maybe in late september early october do a little bit of a, a preview on the season and well, we, we talk gotta about do one after a month to, to have a look at the uh, free agent signings yeah, well, well, we'll see how active it is. I know I'm getting thunder in my area, so yeah, we will sign out for now. Have. have a wonderful summer to both of you guys, and thank you again for being part of the episodes uh, over the last four, and we'll definitely talk soon again. Thanks, guys, for joining in. Okay.